Well, good evening, South Africa. This is Dr. Arthur Frost speaking, and welcome to Kings and Priests. We are currently on day number 12, and we are going to be dealing with the topic of the blessing part two, but we are going to be dealing particularly in the following topics. All right, I'm going to deal with Jacob and the blessing, the purpose of the blessing, and your career and the, as, and the blessing. All right, let's start off with Jacob had the blessing. Remember we said that wherever the blessing is, it was manifested. People could see it. People wanted that thing because whoever had the blessing of the Lord, stuff was happening for them. And so this is our goal. We need to have the blessing of the Lord on our lives. We need to activate the blessing of the Lord because that is going to draw finance to us. It's going to draw wealth to us. And we are going to see the supernatural move of God in our lives. Okay, so I want you quickly just to get ready and I want you to see this. Remember that Abraham had the blessing and he was getting very wealthy. Okay, so after Abraham came Isaac. Okay, and then from Isaac came Jacob. And Jacob obviously realized that this blessing was visible. There was something that you could get from God because he had seen it in his father. He had seen it in his grandfather. And so I want you to see something. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 to 30, it's a fairly long portion of scripture, but I want you to listen carefully as I read this. We're going to take some keys out of this thing because this is what you are entitled to. This is part of your inheritance. Okay, it says this. Then Jacob was left alone. And remember that Jacob's name meant supplanter. He was the scalum. Okay, he was the mucha of the family. He really deceived people. He was not ethical and he used to do a lot of things that were ungodly. Okay, so Jacob in his own name was not really a positive thing. But listen to what happens. And then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against, in other words, the man did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the socket of his hip, basically gave him a lump. Uh, the socket of his hip was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day starting to break. And Jacob said, I will not let you go. Listen to this. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now, I want to just ask you something. If you think that you're wrestling God, if you know that something supernatural is taking place, out of all the stuff that you can ask for, why ask for the blessing? Think about it. If we had to sit down, if I don't ask you right now, if you're in front of God and you ask God, you can ask God anything and you're fighting for a breakthrough in your life. How many of us would ask God for the blessing? Why did Jacob want the blessing out of everything else? Because the blessing changes everything around you. Once you understand the blessing and that thing is released in your life, it changes everything and everything comes to you. And you start moving on a totally different dimension and a different level. Okay, so he says, um, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Okay, this person asked him, what's his name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. That's where we get the word Israel from. The nation of Israel came from this experience. This is where the nation was birthed with the name that they have right now. Why did they get that name? It was because Jacob fought with the angel of the Lord and said, God, and it wasn't actually the angel, it was actually God. He says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he says, your name's going to be called Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. 
See, he said, God, I'm not going to let you go until I have that blessing activated in my life. Now, the same happens with us today. We don't have to fight. We just have to claim that inheritance. Say, God, I call on that blessing. It's mine. I thank you, Lord, that that blessing of the Lord, just like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had, it's mine. Because I am entitled to it as a birthright. And so that blessing can shift everything around you in the name of Jesus. And war. All right, then Jacob asked, tell me what's your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the place Peniel. It says, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. In other words, he saw God, he fought with God and said, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Now, that is the attitude we need to have. Believers, you can activate this blessing in your life. Listen to me. You can activate this blessing in your life if you just understand it. Okay? And so this is what we are after. Because when you walk in this blessing, everything's going to start coming and flowing towards you. And the blessing will then be made manifest in your company or wherever you're working because of you and because the blessing rests on you. Now, I want to go over to uh, step number two. So this was Jacob and the blessing and he's toil with it. What is the purpose for the blessing? Why must I have the blessing flowing on my life? And we're talking about as New Testament believers now, not as Old Testament as New Testament believers, the Bible says that you are heirs to Abraham's promise. You, whatever Abraham was promised, you can have. Right? And part of that is the blessing. Now I want to show you why you need the blessing. Number one, to have an abundance for every good work. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says this. For God is able to make all grace... Now, remember what the word grace means? The word grace means a supernatural ability to fulfill whatever God's given you the grace for. Let me give you an example. Paul says, I have the grace to be an apostle. I have a supernatural ability to be able to function as an apostle. Okay? So, Yari says, God is able to make all grace, in other words, in every area, abound to you, so that you having all sufficiency in all things, in other words, you don't lack in any area of your life, spirit, soul, or body, may have an abundance for every good work. In other words, that you've got more than enough so that you can help in anything. Does somebody need emotional help? Somebody needs spiritual help? Somebody need uh, phys uh, physical help? Whatever the help is, you've got an abundance in your life because of the blessing of the Lord so that you've got an abundance in your life. Okay, so here comes the question. How many of us have lack? If you have lack, you are not demonstrating the blessing in your life yet. Okay, so I want you to know we're all working on this. We're not all there. But I need you to teach you this so that you can get to the level. So number one is that I always have an abundance for every good work. Number two is so that I can be a minister in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. In other words, where the Bible says that God will minister seed to the sower, bread for food, and supply and multiply the seed sown. Now I taught quite a lot on this. Okay, so I'm not going to go into depth here. But basically there are three levels. Number one is where you sit down and you've got some seed. You've got something that you can give. Remember the principle is, if I give, I can receive. So I need something to give. If I don't have any money, somebody can give me some money so that I can give. The second one is bread for food. In other words, that there's enough to meet the need of the house. In other words, you come to somebody's house, they're lacking like now. Especially in this lockdown period, there are people who are lacking some food and practical needs are needed. 
So you could come to them and say, listen, let me pay your lights and water. Let me pay your phone. Let me pay the school fees. Whatever it is, let's get the pressure off this family. That's meeting a need. But the third level is where you supply and multiply that seed that was sown. In other words, they might have given a thousand rand. You come in and say, yes, a hundred thousand. Way past what your need is. Those are the three levels that you can operate in. Now you need to have the blessing so that you can have an abundance. And the level of abundance is to the degree that that blessing is operating in your life. Number three, the purpose of the blessing was there so that the Garden of Eden originally could have been extended. Now, obviously, we know that that didn't happen, okay, because Adam uh, ended up eating of the, of the tree, and that caused the trouble. But you need to decide if you want the blessing in your life, and if you want to be in this level where you do not lack for anything, but you have an abundance to help people around you. And so listen now, I'm going to make a very important statement. Every person should not have poverty, lack, pain, or sickness in their life. If you have any of those, that means that the blessing of God hasn't been fully manifested in your life. Every one of us are still short on that. And so if you are sitting in that area, you need to start getting angry with God and saying, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until I see this thing coming to fruition in my life. Till I see the victory in everything that I do in the name of Jesus. And so this is where we need to be going, folks. This is where we need to be striving for and saying, God, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let go of your word. I'm going to keep going until that flow is there. That when I walk into a room, the atmosphere changes, not because of me, but because of God that lives in me. And that is where we need to be. And that the power of God goes before you and people recognize the blessing that's on your life. People need to sit down and say, I don't understand how that person can be blessed. How is it that they just keep coming up on top? It's not the person, it is the blessing of the Lord, okay, that makes rich. Remember that original scripture? The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. So you need to know that that blessing is there to prosper you. So that you can be a blessing on three levels. I can give seed uh, uh, to the sower. I can give bread. In other words, meet the need. Or I can be the person who comes and does just absolutely bless somebody. And if you're a business person, if you own your business, your heart should be, I want to be that. I want to multiply the seed. I want to be able to sit down and absolutely be the person who multiplies the seed. I want to give a testimony that will probably explain where I would like to go with this. There was a church service that I was watching. It was a Christmas service. A mega church, a lot of people. And what had happened was, was that the pastor had arranged with his millionaires in his church. And he had said, listen, I want you to get ready. And what he did was he said to the congregation, Nobody knew about this except him and his businessmen. And he said, listen, I want everybody who's in this church that's financially struggling right now, I want you to be honest and open and stand up. And a lot of people stood up. And they stood up and they said, obviously we're struggling and there's debt and all sorts of things. And he said, I want you to come forward. And everybody was expecting that he was going to pray for them. And then he stood up and he said, listen, I'm calling all of the businessmen to come forward right now. And he put all of the millionaires on the stage. And he said to the millionaires, Sirs, it's time that you multiply the blessing to these folk. Clear their debt. They literally walked down and took checkbooks and started to write out checks for every single person in that church. That every single person walked out of there debt free that day. I want to tell you right now, that is a demonstration of how God wants the kingdom to operate. All right. Sometimes you end up in a situation not because of bad judgment. It could just be simple like this virus that has come. Now you've lost your job. 
You did nothing wrong. You did not ask for this. But you end up in a situation where it just happens. It's either just life or people are jealous or whatever it is. And you end up in a situation. You need to have the blessing of the Lord operating in your life. And so I want to just encourage us tonight. Let's not settle for second best. Let's settle for what God has planned and purposed in our lives. And so today I want to just shift something again. I want to deal with your career and the blessing. In other words, I have an anointing now and I go into a place and the power of God is moving through me. Because of the blessing of God, not because of what I've done, not because of who I am. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit flowing in my life. Now, I want to ask you, how do you see yourself in your workplace? Let's go through this. My job should not be a job to get finance. You are not, you should not be working just because I need a salary. Listen very carefully. It was like Abraham, he said, listen, I don't want anybody to give me anything unless you say that you made me rich. Your work should not be because you need a, some finance. The blessing should bring me the finance that I need. The blessing should supernaturally bring me the finance that I need. You know, I can vouch for that. All right, we haven't had a proper salary since 2005. It's a few years now. And we can vouch for supernatural interventions. We can vouch for supernatural things happening to us all and all the years, simply because we did not have a, fine, a, a, a fixed salary and a, and a job. Okay? And so what happens is this is that if you can get this right and say, God, I'm not telling you to leave your jobs now. What I am saying is change your focus. Change your focus. Because even if you don't have a job, God can still bring finance to you. God can bless you and bless you abundantly. There are so many people who have given me testimonies of how they got blessed in this lockdown. How that they've actually walked out of lockdown more prosperous than when they started. Now, how did that happen? Because they are starting to understand the principles. And they're starting to apply the principles. The principles have got to work. Because it's God's word. Okay. So my job, if that's not the case, if I'm, not, if I'm working because I need a salary, it's, it's a wrong motive. So what is my job then? Why am I going to work? Because you should be going to work as an assignment. You are on an assignment. God has called you to go into that company and be a blessing. Now, if things shift and God wants you somewhere else, and you might not want to even hear or move, God might end up having you retrench so that you can move. You know, that's one of the things that happens with us. In my family, we are very faithful and we will stick to something. You know, the, the thing could be dead and we're still going because we will say, listen, we are going to be faithful to this thing right up until the end. And God has often had to sit down and turn the circumstances so that I would then go where God has me to go for the next phase of training. My life has been literally, God takes me this place for phase of training, next phase, next phase. Because he's equipping me for my function. And I don't even say that I'm there. But at least I have something to give in different elements right now. Facets. Now that is what we call an apostolic ministry. All right. Where you're able to give in different facets. But you have to get trained properly in the different facets. That's why we say most apostles don't even feature until they're around 50 years old. Because they have to be trained in so many different things. And that's why you find out from our family and they go... We have moved so many times. I'm on a correction, but I think my child, Jade, had seven schools, I think, in her school career. So what I'm saying is, and God has blessed that and supernaturally given us the ability and the grace to be able to handle that. But the point is, 
You need to know that you are on assignment. And so God puts you in a business. Either your own business, you've had a strong desire, I need to run this myself, or I work for somebody. But your job, your career is an assignment. You need to say, God, I'm on assignment here. I'm not doing this for finance. God says the finance is going to come. But the finance comes because of the blessing on my life, whether I have this job or not. Listen carefully. Whether I have this job or not, God is still going to see me provide for me because the blessing is flowing. Now, my salary should be a seed that I can sow into others and not be my source. This is a major, major shift and I want you to take note of this. Very important. If you are in the situation where you say, listen, I need the 25th. Yo, when, when, when I hear this statement, I really get, I get nervous. Three more days to payday. Yeah, you know, there's more month than there is salary. Be careful of those statements because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm trusting in that paycheck. You see, you should be saying, listen, God, I thank you for providing for me so that I've got an abundance for the end, till the end of the month. You should not be sitting down and going, geez, I don't know how I'm going to make it by the end of the month. You know, well, this idea at the beginning of the month, we eat nicely and by the time you get to the end of the month, it's peanut butter and sandwich. That's not God's blessing. Where's the abundance in that? What you're doing and you're showing us is, is that your source is your paycheck. So your career, your job should be an assignment. You should say, God, I'm going to work with an assignment. I've got a purpose. I need to be a light. I need to be salt. I'm here to establish an altar. And God, you will take care of me. That's why I said you can be a janitor and still carry an incredible anointing and carry the blessing of the Lord. And God could be turning that whole place around just because of you. So you need to change your idea of your career. My job is an assignment. Everything that I do is an assignment. Everything that I do. All right. We'll talk like that in our family. We'll say, listen, what mission are we on in this thing? Why does God want us to go and deal with this thing or be involved in this thing? What is the mission? Because we are an assignment and not once do we ever, ever contemplate finance. Not once. Because we cannot afford to let finance dictate whether I can do what God's called me to do. Every single time, God has called us to do something. We have stepped out and believed God for it. Even now, God has called me to have a college. I don't have the finance for that college. I really don't. But I have the vision. I have the plan. And I'm believing God. And God is going to raise up the men and women that have got the finance to come and help me and assist me. But I'm showing you something that I didn't wait until I had it. Right? I've spent years developing it and getting it ready on the table as fast and practically as I can. Why? That's my assignment. Have I been paid for the years that I've put into this? No. Listen carefully. Just to write that curriculum probably took us about 10 years. Okay? Every single day I was studying. It took us about 10 years. Did I get paid for that? Not one cent. Zero. And every time somebody came, we'd give it away. We've given the stuff away all the time. So they go, but what about the finance? You should be getting money for that. No, you guys are missing it. We are on assignment. God is my source. God needs to help and provide for my family. Because I'm sticking to the principles. Right? I go through my checklist. And so as I do that, even now, I'm not at the fruition of what God has called me to do in my life. God has clearly said that we need to set up this college and so that we can take care of the sectors in our nation and turn back what Satan has tried to steal from our country. 
And God is going to help us to sit down and raise the leaders and raise the spiritual standard in this nation. But let me tell you something. It's not done because or motivated by finance. Because the minute I started to do what God called me to do, God always came through for my family. God always was our source. And so therefore, I want to make it very, very clear. Your job is your assignment. You need to say, God, I'm going into this thing. And even if you say, listen, my assignment is to make money. Listen carefully if you're a businessman. My assignment is to make lots of money so that I can go and bless and finance the kingdom and do what needs to be done. You see, you need to understand that. And so you need to say, whatever you do, see it as a total shift from now on. Don't ever say, God, this month is too far. I don't know how I'm going to make it to the end of the month. Well, let me tell you something. You can trust God and believe God that you have an abundance by the time the month end comes. Do not sit down and say, listen, I'm not going to panic. Let me tell you something. It's the same as when you sit down and say, listen, God, um, you know, I, I don't have a means to get any finance. I understand that. But God also knows that. He knows that you don't have the means. You can believe God and God will bring it to you. Okay? Listen to this. If my job is my source, if my job is my source, it's going to end up with sorrow. Because it's not the blessing of the Lord that's going to make you rich. You are now doing it in your own strength. How many times do you see Christians have the same results as the world? I want to encourage you tonight. Let's shift this. Let's change this. My job is my assignment. I'm doing what God called me to do. And God will take care of the finance on the way. Do you know that the Gentiles have to do this? Okay. They have to do this. They have to rely on their salary. They have to rely on that paycheck. Listen carefully. Why? Because it's their only system. They don't have another system. The Gentile has to sit down ungodly, not knowing Jesus Christ. He has only one system. That's what we know as the world system. You as a believer have a choice. You can use the world system, and most of us do. You know, most of us are speaking just like the world, acting just like the world, and then we expect God to bless us. And he won't. But you have the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow and is an inheritance to you. And all you have to do is activate it and change your approach and say, God, from today, I'm going to go into this job and I'm going to see it as my um, assignment, not as my source. And if God wants to move me to another place, then that's fine. I will follow God. God will open the right door for me. I want to tell you something. We need to understand this. God says that he will direct the path of the righteous. Right? God says that if he opens a door, nobody's going to shut it. If he's going to close the door, nobody's going to open it. I can vouch for that in my life. Many times. When we came back to Port Elizabeth, for the six, there was a six-month period when I came back from Pretoria, and then we went to Kenton. For six months, absolutely nothing that we did worked. Nothing. I, I couldn't even get a home cell together. Do you know that after six months of trying to get a home cell together, I had four people? Now, for me, that is like impossible. I just didn't understand it. Because my home cells normally run about 50 people. Okay. I could not get a home cell even going. And then what happened was we tried to run a church and we couldn't even get people to come to church. I think at that stage, I think the church was only about eight people. We couldn't get people to come to church. 
and no matter what we did, could not work. My wife got accepted um, in three jobs in that time, three jobs, and she could not start one of them. Every single time there was something that would happen. She would get the acceptance letter and she'd get employment letter and the next second she'll get a thing saying, sorry, head office overseas rejects it and it's, uh, the post is vacant or whatever. Three times she tried in six months. Nothing we did worked. Why? Because God shut the door. And God took us to Kenton so that we could have the time, the space, and the emotional support to get healed, number one, and number two, to write the curriculum. Now, I want to tell you that God is your source. It doesn't matter where you are. And if we can get this right, we are not going to move away from the Gentile system. We are going to go according to God's system. And God's system is going to provide for us. <clears throat> so listen to this. I should bring the blessing into the business and drive out the curse and get the sorrow out of that business. I should bring the blessing in. And as the blessing comes in, the sorrow and the curse gets pushed back. Well, I'm pushing back the decay. Why? Because of the anointing and the power of God and the blessing that rests on my life. So I want us to pray right now. As we pray, I want you to sit down and say, God, I thank you that I can repent of making my job my source. Today, I'm going to make it my assignment. No matter what level or in the business you are, and push in with God and say, God, I'm going to activate that blessing. How do I activate the blessing? I just have to call it. It's yours. You know, this is the funny thing about Christians. It's like, if I give you a gift, and I say, here's a gift, and you don't take it, you'll never have it. It's, let me tell you a story. I don't know if it's true, but this is a good illustration. There was a guy who sat down and he said, I'll never have anything. I'll never have anything. And it was a hobo. It turns out that this guy was a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And they eventually tracked this guy down because he'd inherited it. And when they tracked him down, they said, yeah, here's the paperwork. Here's the proof. You are part of so-and-so's relative. You're a multi, multi millionaire. He goes, I'll never have anything. I'll never have, I haven't got anything. I'll never have anything. And so basically what he was saying is this. I reject the gift that was given to me, rightfully mine. But we do the same. Every time we murmur and complain, we say, God, we reject the blessing. We want the, we want the world system. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get the sorrow with it. You're going to get the pain with it. You're going to get the anguish with it and the sleepless nights. Or you can say, God, I rely on the blessing and you're going to come through for us. I want us to pray. Lord, we come before you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that the blessing maketh rich and adds no sorrow. And Lord, I pray right now for every business person listening. And Lord, I pray that as we go to work, we will see our workplace as our assignment, not the job. Lord, I thank you that you are moving by your spirit in our lives. We ask you to forgive us where we've had our source on the job. But Lord, knowing that you are our source, Lord, we ask you right now to shift our mindsets, to shift our attitude. And Lord, that we will see everything that we do as the assignment that you have given us to do. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.